Just north of Cincinnati, Ohio in southwest Columbus is the small town of Loveland, Ohio. The population of less than 14,000, Loveland isn't known for a whole lot. It is a major stop along the Little Miami Scenic Trail and it has the Little Miami River running straight through it. But in March of 1972, something would happen that would shape the history of this town forevermore. Two police officers would wind up seeing something that would wind up becoming a legend and spurring a musical in 2014. Join me in this very special episode of Ohio Legends and Tales as we take on the first of our cryptid series, The Loveland Frog. So the bridge right behind me runs over the Little Miami River. According to the legend, our story begins in 1955. Several sources cite several different stories about what exactly happened in 1955, but they all come to the same conclusion. One of the sources that I researched actually had a name in it, Robert Honeycutt. Now Robert was a traveling salesman who was coming through Loveland on business. It was late at night and he was driving his car over a bridge, most likely the bridge right behind me. As he approached the bridge, he spotted three figures standing in the dark. In the darkness, it appeared to him that all three figures had the faces of frogs. They were all wearing hooded cloaks, and he couldn't quite make out what they were talking about, although he could hear that they were discussing something. Now, Robert was truly perplexed at what he was seeing. He wasn't quite sure if he was just imagining things, or maybe just the shadows he couldn't see very well in the dark, so maybe it was something that just with the way the shadows were falling. He wasn't quite sure. Before he could fully react to what he was seeing, one of the figures spotted him. Now there are several different endings to the story of what exactly happens. Each of the stories I could find though mentions that one of the figures took a wand and stuck it up in the air and sparks came flying out of the end of it. Now different variations of the story have different things coming out of the wand but they all have a wand involved in some way. Almost like these are supposed to be kind of magical beings. Now most of the stories have Robert leading off before he finds out what happens with the creatures. Some of the stories however actually have the creatures jumping over the side of the bridge after throwing sparks or, or some kind of light out of the end of the wall. But where the legend truly takes off is in 1972. On March 3rd, 1972, police officer Ray Shockey was driving his patrol car along Riverside Drive. That's the road right here behind me. It was late at night and as he approached the Toad's Boot Factory, his headlights would fall upon a creature that was crawling across the roadway. Now, Officer Shockey would say later that this creature was around three to four feet long and had leathery skin. He would also say that as it approached the guardrail, it crouched like a frog before climbing up on top of the guardrail and climbing over and heading down towards the river. Now, Officer Shockey was alone when he saw this creature and reports differ about whether or not he says, originally he said that he fired some shots at it, but reports are kind of sketchy on whether or not he actually fired any shots at it. Two weeks later, somebody would back up Officer Shockey's story. So about two weeks after Ray Shockey saw this creature, Officer Mark Matthews was heading down the same stretch of road late at night when he too would have an encounter. His encounter was pretty similar to what Officer Shockey had reported, with one exception. Officer Matthews said he had also fired three shots at the creature. Now Officer Matthews wasn't clear about whether or not he hit the creature. He thought he might have hit it and he reported as such that he may have hit it with one, with one or two of his rounds, but he said the creature had taken off and gotten into the river before he could do anything about it. 
from that point on, between 1972 and 2016, not much would happen. But in 2016, there was another sighting that would shed a whole new light on the story and forever change the story of the Loveland Frogman. So in 2016, Sam Jacobs and his girlfriend were here at Lake Isabella. They were playing Pokemon Go, and they would have an encounter with what was known as the Loveland Frogman. It was late in the evening, and it was rather dark, but they could see something off in the lake. They couldn't quite tell what it was, though. Sam would take out his phone and begin recording and taking pictures. He would capture video of what looked like two glowing eyes sitting just above the water in the lake. Now at the time, Sam didn't think of it as the Loveland Frogman. He just thought it was a regular frog. He hadn't seen one quite so big, which is why he decided to capture the video and he would show his friends and he would show people around the school. Now at the time, this was a rather big deal and local news outlets would start trying to report on it. And they would track down Ray Shockey, who at this point had moved down to Florida. And they would ask him about his original encounter with the Loveland Frogman in 1972. So this is where the twist of the story comes in. During the original couple of sightings in 1972, Ray Shockey and Mark Matthews had gotten a friend of theirs to draw up a mock image of what the creature looked like. They then took that image to the Cincinnati Zoo and they had a zoologist look at it and try and tell them what he thought it looked like. Now at the time, the zoologist at the Cincinnati Zoo said that the creature to him looked a lot like the creature from the Black Lagoon from the recently released movie. Fast forward to 2016 when newspapers and, and news outlets were tracking down Ray Shockey and it would wind up that he would admit that he had actually hoaxed the whole thing. Him and Mark Matthews together had decided to have a little bit of fun with this. The truth, from what he said, was that he had actually seen something on March 3rd, 1972, and he wasn't sure what it was, but he had told Mark about it to keep an eye out for something in the area. Two weeks later, the sighting that Mark had had actually taken place, and he had actually fired at the creature. He would wind up hitting and killing the creature and then put it in the trunk of his car and taking it back to the station to show Ray. When he showed it to Ray, Ray would confirm that it was the creature that he had seen. But what they realized was it wasn't a frogman. It was actually a very, very sickly looking iguana that was missing its tail. The most likely explanation is that somebody in the area had decided to get an exotic pet and couldn't care for that pet anymore and had let it go. Now being in March, you would think that it would be kind of difficult for iguanas to survive in the area because of the cold. And actually it would have been very difficult except for the fact that near the boot factory where it had been seen, there was actually an exhaust vent down near the river. And that's most likely where the iguana was living at and it was helping to keep it warm through the cold nights and the cold days. But even with that heat source, it was very frail and it's surprising that it lasted as long as it did. Now what Ray and Mark decided to do with this, instead of just tell everybody, oh yeah, it was an iguana, they wanted to have a little bit of fun and play a little prank. They never really expected it to get that big. It did get big enough though, and Loveland got famous enough for it that in 2014 there was actually a musical made called Hot Damn is the Loveland Frog. And that musical was actually presented at the Cincinnati Film Festival in 2014. So that's the story of the Loveland Frogman and how a prank wound up growing into something that would become a musical and a kind of terrifying story for some people because what's more terrifying than thinking about like a giant frogman coming out of the lake or coming out of the water coming to get you, right? Other than some of the other things that we've got coming up in the Cryptid series here. <laughs> so, so I do want to make a real quick announcement before I end the video here. Just because some of you that have been around for a while may have noticed that recently the number of videos on my channel went way down. I had, I had over 100 videos and there was everything from cemetery chats to creative stuff and photography videos and, and that kind of stuff on the channel. So what I decided to do was make these Legends and Tales videos the primary focus of this channel. So my goal is to have a new video out every other Friday. The next few videos are going to be solely focused on cryptids. So I've been planning on covering a lot of the cryptids around Ohio because Ohio does have a lot of really cool kind of creature stories. So I wanted to cover all of those, but I'm also changing things up a little bit. It's no longer going to be just Ohio legends and tales. From this point forward, it's going to be legends and tales. We're going to start with finishing off Ohio through the rest of the year. And then we're going to wind up, you know, going around to neighboring states and, and kind of picking more stuff up. The cemetery chats that I've been doing aren't going away. They've actually moved to a new home. I've got a new channel called Josh Bearhart's Cemetery Chats. 
I'll link that down in the description below so you can go check it out. That's where all the cemetery chat's gonna be moving forward. So if that's something you're interested in, that's something you can go check out. I wanted to also mention the patrons real quick because the patrons are the driving force behind the channel and especially with these Legends and Tales videos. It's because of the patrons that I'm able to go out and do some of these videos that I wouldn't otherwise get to do. And so I wanna thank everybody that has signed up for the Patreon. I'll put all the names up here. If you're interested in signing up, you can get things like early access to videos, behind the scenes content, and so much more. There's a lot of different stuff, so go check that out if that's something you're interested in. Uh, it helps out the channel a ton, so go check it out. But with that being said, I think that's probably gonna do it for this episode of Ohio Legends and Tales. What did you guys think of the Loveland Frogman? Do you think that it's possible that something like that could even exist? The plan for the next episode of Ohio Legends and Tales is going to take us up to Lake Erie for something of a, of a lake monster. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming out in a couple of weeks. I want to thank you all for watching. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.